You want to start now? All right. All right, so we have another uh, discussion presentation on the uh, MAPSEM uh, contention issue. So we'll uh, let the speakers introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Laurent Dufour. I'm working for IBM. Hello, I'm uh, Jerome Glees. I'm working for Red Hat. So same come company, on. I guess. Come, come on. Okay, so you now you're IBM. <laughs> <laughs> So we are talking about the um, killing the MAPSEM contention. That's quite a follow-up of what Michel presented uh, previously. That just a different approach to access to, to address the problem. Uh, more of the common issue. Um, okay, so we cannot see it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. So that's the same, uh, I, will, I will not uh, talk uh, a lot about the MAPSEM contention. Michel made a great uh, uh, show about that. So uh, nothing more to, uh, to mention there. Uh, just to mention that there is also the LRU lock that somehow is also uh, making trouble now on some systems. Uh, Jerome is playing with his, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will go short, uh, very uh, quickly on the on these slides because Michel already told everything about that. Um, so one of the biggest problem with the uh, MapSem today is that this double uh, ordered uh, linked list that um, is not very cash efficient from what uh, has been told. And the augmented arbitrary also is storing information. It's not only arbitrary, it's also to find, how to find the, the gap uh, when you are looking for a free area that's a, a very uh, fast process using the augmented arbitrary because there is a gap stored inside. So this is very important to keep that in mind because finding a, a gap, a free gap, is very, uh, uh, that needs to be very fast. And also we have the uh, uh, locks locking on the uh, page tables. That's also one way to address the problem because we can rely on these locks to uh, do some uh, VMA operation because as, assuming that once we get the PTL, we know that nothing will happen in this area. So that's uh, uh, some, some, some topic to, to, to keep in mind. Uh, so basically, yes, uh, Michel already uh, uh, explained that. A lot of stuff is done using the, uh, the MAPSEM. But also, there is uh, one workaround that Michel did not mention that's stack growing. That's something that's done without taking the MAPSEM in the right mode, because that will be uh, uh, too much uh, uh, contention. So this is one workaround, one mitigation that has been put in place. And that's something that needs to be keep in mind also because that's changing the, the layout of the virtual memory. And so there is the downgrade that uh, Michel already talked about that. So my uh, idea is to put the VMA locking inside or nearby the VMA's data. I, I think that the, the locking is more efficient if it is nearby the data it is protecting. So my uh, idea is to protect uh, the, 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 the range that we will address, but to put that locking information inside the VMA instead of putting that in a separate tree. That's the main difference between the Michel approach and ours one. So, but it, it's, it's always a trade-off. There is no, today it's difficult to say that there is one option that's be, better than the other one. So, and putting the, the, the lock inside the VMA also makes sense because we have to lock all the VMA's range. Because we want to prevent the VMA to be, to, to be, to be split because that's making trouble when we are trying to address, to access the, the VMA structure while someone is split it in, in, in our back or merging it in our bag. So merging, uh, locking on the VMA boundaries seems to be the uh, uh, lock grain that we should use. 
So using the lock inside the VMA make, makes this easier because we know exactly the boundaries at this time. So that's why I think that's uh, uh, putting the, the, the range inside the VMA, it's, it's, the, it's the best way for me. Um, there is a problem when taking the range lock is that we have the risk of a deadlock. If one thread wants to lock a range, another thread uh, lock a upper range, and then these other threads want to lock this range while the other one wants to lock this one. That's a deadlock situation. So one of the rules I, 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 I assuming is that the lock is always done from the lowest address to the highest address. If, if we need to lock two area, we will first lock the lowest one and then the higher one. Never the reverse. So that, this is a, a convention I, I, I try to, to, to put in place in the code. So there is some drawback for that. In the case of the M remap uh, uh, flow, we may want to remap one area to somewhere we don't know where at the time. So we need to fetch some free area to remap this one to a larger one, for instance. And if we do that, maybe the, uh, the, the range we will found once we have locked that part we want to remap, maybe lower. So that breaks the, the, the rule. So we need to relax this one, locks the free area, and try to re-lock the, the area we want to lock. So that's kind of ugly situation that needs to be addressed in that case. I don't know if, the, if you think about that in the range lock you want to put in place, Michel. Okay. Most of the time, I only have one locked range at a yeah. time, and so that's really easy. But a remap is, is quite painful in it, especially when you don't know where you want to remap. Right. That's a nightmare. I agree we would want to make some order based on the, based on the addresses. That's the simplest way. Yeah. So, everybody can read that? Yeah. Um, so that's the, um, the following on the uh, VMA rules. Um, so we locked on the VMA boundaries. But if the lock, the area we want to lock is covering multiple VMA, we have to lock all the VMAs, of course. And we may have to lock area that bit which are between two VMA, in the case of M and MAP, you can M and MAP will launch our long range, and that range is covered by multiple VMA with gap between those VMA. So in that case, we have to also lock the range between those VMA because we don't want someone to do an M map in our back. In this area, we will unmap. And also, we may have to lock area before, just before a, a VMA and just after a VMA. That's quite a uh, um, use case for the growing area or when you want to, the ellipse uh, allocator is usually a map and a map in six seconds uh, range. So we need to uh, lock this area. So in that case, we have to lock the range just after the VMA or just before the VMA, the previous VMA. And that will be done by extending the lock we apply to the VMA. And there is also the corner cases where there is no, nothing. And we want to map in an area where there is nothing already yet mapped. So in that case, we don't have a VMA to hold the lock. And that's a real problem. And in that case, we need to introduce some dummy VMA the time we are creating the maps just to hold the lock. And that dummy VMA later will be converted in true VMA, but that's just filling the, the fields inside VMA. And then it's already in the, in the tree, so that's fine. And there is also another corner case, uh, sorry, I didn't put in the slide, wow. Yeah, that's the case where we are unmapping uh, VMAs uh, while doing the PT cleanup. We need to prevent any other threats to map in this area, so we need some VMAs to be there to hold the log that will be uh, covering the part we are actually cleaning, so just to be sure someone is not uh, mapping in our back. So, 
that's some kind of hack situation we have to address. And now the VMA locks contagion. That's the case when we are locking uh, an area that's is just bordering. Is that is just uh, um, no? Yeah, no bordering. I say that. Uh, it's just at the border of the next VMA. So there is a risk that the two VMAs will be merged. So we need to lock that VMA and the subsequent one. So that's the, the contention. I have some uh, slide that will present that. Uh, the end map. Ah, oh, yeah, is it? <laughs> OK, it's later. <laughs> So that's what I, I just uh, said earlier, that we need to introduce the dummy VMA when we are on mapping area, and that we want to be sure that while when the VMA has been detached from the tree, we want to be sure that there is no one putting a new VMA in this area. So we need to put some dummy VMA just to hold the lock. So that's uh, some exercise. <laughs> So in black is the area we want to lock. In red is the area we will effectively lock. So an interesting case. So the first case is quite easy to understand. We are locking some part of the VMA1. And so we will extend the lock to the whole part of the VMA1 because we want to be sure that that VMA will not be split or whatever. And the case two is explaining what I was saying about uh, an address that's covering a bordering of the next VMA. So in that case, we are locking VME1 and VME2 because we don't want the VME1 to be merged with the VME2. For example, that can happen if we are changing the protection of the VMA. So the VME1 has a read-only protection, the VME2 have read-write protection. So this is anonymous VMA. And so we are changing the part of the VME1 to become a read-write VMA. So that means that the VME1 will split in two and it will merge with the VME2. Or the VMA2 will be extended uh, and done, um, uh, in, in, in to cover the part that VMA1 has been changed. So there is this kind of changes that makes the uh, VMA looking very uh, ugly sometimes. Uh, case 3 is uh, straightforward. So I, I will not explain all of them. So if we have uh, any questions, so the, um, I made a mistake. The number 8 is not correct. Uh, in that case, the, the, the locked area will be there. I make a mistake for this one. Sorry. Any question? Number four. Yeah. Can you add a dummy for the external node? So this happened in... Um, some particular case, so you have some uh, already mapped VMA, and you do an unmap that's override one part of the VMA and extending the part of the, that VMA. In that case, we will lock the whole VMA1 plus the part beyond that, because we don't want someone to put another VMA in that place. So that's why we are extending the lock here. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so basically, like the locks will be still in the VMA1, you will be uh, increasing the range. Yeah, we, yeah, absolutely. We will see that later, yeah. Okay. That's the way it's done, yeah. So that kind of locking is only occurring for the right locking. On the read locking, you cannot lock outside of the VMA's boundary because that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you still have a separate lock protecting uh, VMA arbitrary, right? Yeah, 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 I, absolutely. So that, 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 that's completely independent yes. on the way the VMA are stored right. and fetched. So we can imagine in the future that you can rely on the uh, uh, maple tree that could provide a lockless access to the VMA. And Yam provided a good, a good presentation right. for that yesterday. So you have to take the VMA, the log that protects the arbitrary, then find the first VMA, unlock it, and like go through all these VMAs, unlock them all. Do you release the arbitrary lock while you lock any individual VMA? Or how does no, the idea, uh, if using the current uh, implementation with the arbitrary and the double link list, I'm rely on the MFSM, or I can introduce a separate lock just to, to protect this VMA arbitrary and this list, because there is no way today to access this list without taking a lock. So, but 
once I fetch all the VMA and put the mark to say that, okay, this VM is locked, this VM is locked, whatever, I can realize this lock, I don't worry it, because the VM are locked. So I, I don't need that lock anymore. So this is the case where there is nothing uh, at, the, uh, at the time we want to map in this area. There is no already existing VMA. So we will need the Jumi VMA just to hold the lock by the time we will do the processing. And once the processing is done, this Jumi VMA will be converted into the VMA tree here. Yeah. And it is just the, 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 um, the Mi VMA structure itself is used to populate the fields correctly and that's all. So that's straightforward for that case. And unmapping is painful because that in this case, it's very uh, simplified. There is only one VMA covering the unmapped area. So that's quite easy because the, we, we can think that the VMA2 will be converted into a dummy VMA, but that's not the case. Let's imagine that instead of having one VMA uh, at the, an, in this area, we have, uh, uh, I don't know, hundreds of VMAs covering the area. So when we will do the unmap, the, the VMA will be detached from the VMA tree. But uh, at the time we are detaching the VMA, we are inserting a dummy VMA just to hold the lock so that the other threads will know that this area is locked during this time. So we can do the cleanup with the area still locked. Uh, when you say you need to uh, lock the range beyond what the VMA is covered, do you mean that you have to actually change the VMA to extend the southern address or extend the length to cover the whole area during that time? Sorry, sorry I didn't catch what you said. Well, the VMA should specify the starting and the ending address of the range. Mm -hmm. And when you say you have to extend it beyond that, so you actually need to change the southern address or the length to cover yeah. the extended area, right? Yeah. But, and then at the end, when you find out that you don't need that, you have to string it, right? String it back to... Shrinking, shrinking will be uh, the same case. So we will uh, lock the wall boundary uh -huh. of the VMA. So from the start address to the end address of the VMA. And the VMA will be shrink. So the locked part will remain the same. We are shrinking the VMA, and then we unlock the part. I see. Because so w w when shrinking, you, you will probably unmap some PTE in that area that has been removed. So we don't want another thread to map there, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we can unmap the PTE we'll just put in place. So that's some kind of So in the common case, do you, do you actually string it at the end, or just leave it as it is? It depends. OK. It depends on what the uh, operation is doing. Mm -hmm. There are sometimes the VMA can grow, sometimes it can shrink. There is a lot of uh, VMA operation done when you are doing a map. Okay, thanks. Okay. So um, this is how the VMA lock structure will be uh, put in place. This is very uh, high-level di di diagram. So the idea is not to put the, the lock inside the VMA itself, but to point from the VMA to the lock. And having only one lock covering multiple VMA in that case, we have the VMA lock one that's covering VMA two, three, and four. And the VMA lock itself is specifying the, the size of the locked area. So we need to have the VMA locked separated from the VMA itself because in the case we are splitting the VMA, in the case we are merging the VMA, the operation is, is straightforward, the pointer remains the same. We're splitting a VMA, we are just duplicating the VMA, the VMA pointer for the locks remain the same. Yeah. How do you handle multiple read locks uh, within the same VMA? So for the read locks, what I am, I am doing, the read locks is always covering one VMA. I do not support the case where we are read locking multiple VMA because I didn't find a situation where this will be useful. Maybe I'm, I, maybe I'm missing something, but... Page 4? Page 4 is covering one VMA. 
Yeah, yeah, but you can have multiple page for multiple threads folding pages in the same big VMA. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, so in that case, what I am doing, so there is one thing that is part of the VMA structure is the number of reader that uh, are locking that VMA. So inside the VMA structure, there is one atomic pointer, an yes. atomic value that is used to store the number of readers that are locking that VMA. Right, that makes sense. And when the reader is greater than one, is greater than zero, sorry. Right. That means that a writer cannot lock it. So you just keep the same uh, lock structure for multiple readers in that case? In that case, there is no lock structure for the readers. Because there is, there is no need for that. If there is a reader, it's just incrementing the, the, reader point, the reader counter for this VMA. So there is no lock needed, just incrementing this into atomic values. That's okay. In that, if sense. now a, a writer wants to log that VMA where there is already readers, it will create the VMA lock operation, and it will wait on a wait queue that is part of this VMA lock operation for all the readers to exit. And once the last reader exits, it will wake up the writer. If there is another reader that come at the time, it will increase and it will wake on the reader wake queue on the VMA lock. So the, the, the next reader will wait for the writer to operate before going forward. And once they will, they, 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 they will walk up, since the writer may have been cleaned the VMA in your back, you have to refetch the VMA from the beginning. That's the idea. Uh, so um, what about in the proc uh, PID mem map, um, mm file? Would the, the locking just sequentially walk through every VMA then? Taking so the yeah, lock, lock step. That, that's the problem. When, you, uh, when we are uh, working the VMA tree, that's yeah. what you mean. Yes. My, my point here is that we are right, relocking one VMA. And then we need to restart, fetching the next VMA from the end of the last VMA address. Because we don't know is that VMA, once we will release that lock, we don't know if that VMA is still there. So with the next may be garbage. So the thing is that we have the end address of the last VMA we have processed. So we can refetch from the end to fetch the next VMA Yeah, um, from the tree. OK, but then you might actually land in the middle of a VMA. No, because you are locking the VMA itself. But you've locked it. You remove the lock. You start from the beginning, from the end. Yeah. When you, when you start from the beginning, you're looking for the next VMA. If you, when you remove your relock, yeah, I do a agree. writer may yes, remap. Yes, yes, that may be incorrect. Yeah, okay. that's a problem. You're right. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is that working the VMA in the read mode, uh, I'm assuming that's the best effort we have to provide there. So that's, I, 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 don't, find, I, I don't know a, a part of the code that needs to work the tree and to be sure that we have all the values of the trees. Even today, the proc VM, VM maps can provide wrong information. Well, it's, but it's complete wrong information, right? It's either old or new? Uh, no, I don't think so. Because uh, I think that when writing to the, I, I, so it needs to be double checked. But I think that when we are writing to the proc file, we are raising the MFSM. Okay. Uh. I think so. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, sure I'm not either. I'm not 100% sure of that, so that needs to be double-checked, uh, to be honest. But that's true, that can, be, that can be an issue. So maybe in that case, having the, uh, grabbing the locked from the complete tree will help, but that's not something I do like. Yeah, no, me neither. So I, I, to be honest, I, I don't have a clear answer for that. Maybe one option could be to write lock. The, I mean, that's a nightmare too. Yeah, take the right lock just to walk the entire yeah, tree. Yeah, would be, a good uh, you're I, I, you're I, back I, to the same problem. So, uh, then. Yeah, I have no uh, no good option for that. Okay, that's good. That's good point. Yeah, I need, I need to uh, to work more on that. Yeah, but I, I put that limitation to have only one VMA in read lock for per thread, because that simplifies a lot the operation. Uh, speaking about uh, reference counting, uh, do you, can you comprehend how hot can it be? Because uh, you know, I know software that uh, does a lot of uh, uh, 
memory attribute uh, changing uh, from many threads. And uh, in, in, in past it was very efficient because uh, <laughs> how Linux uh, uh, memory management was implemented. So I just want to mention that if uh, this uh, ref refer reference counter will be very hot, uh, like we'll see a lot of uh, performance degradation on uh, large systems, especially NUMA ones. So you, s you say that today with the MFSM, changing a lot of VME attributes is something that's going faster than it will be yeah, in Yeah, so I'm speaking specifically about still bank common lisp, uh, so it, they implemented garbage collector in a very special way because uh, Linux memory management allowed them to ch change uh, page uh, attribute like in uh, uh, 1500 uh, microseconds, which is you know very fast for such thin. And uh, I think that if we do uh, changes like reference counting, we may regress such situations. They are but not very is, common. There is no reference counter there. I mean, I mean uh, by introducing reference counter, which is atomic operation, if uh, you found in the same uh, VMA from uh, many cores, uh, which uh, sit across NUMA boundaries, you'll be saturating a QPI link. So this needs to be checked carefully. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure there are some common cases that will not be so efficient, probably, yeah. But in that particular case, I think that's today when you are changing a VM attribute, you have to grab the MFSM. Yeah, so... And so there is a lot of contention where you have thousands of threads within couple that's of doing some uh, operation. Yes. So and that's, that's all, all, all serialized today. It got much worse in the <laughs> previous couple of years, we know why. <laughs> but before that, it was very efficient. I was amazed. I, I, I cannot <laughs> see how, how we can be efficient today, to be honest. If you have thousands of threads that are changing some VME attributes in parallel, they are all serialized today. Yeah. Because of that MAPSEM. Yeah. So that, that's, th th this is always a trade-off. That's, unfortunately, that's, it's very difficult to, add, to, to satisfy all the, 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 um, the cases we can see. That's crazy. So maybe there is some, um, uh, I, as, especially seeing so about the monothreaded processes, where the impact should be lower than the maximum. But for multi-threaded process, if you have uh, this kind of lock, uh, range lock, whatever it is implementation, that should be faster than today. But. We have to see, <laughs> of course. So merging and splitting VMA, I already talked about that. It's straightforward in that case because the pointer that's pointing to the lock is um, it's just uh, duplicated. So there is nothing else to introduce. And a VMA that is read locked cannot be merged or split. So it's never happened. And so nothing uh, 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 special to report. And the merge should only happen on VMAs that are locked by the same threads. Otherwise, it's clearly a bug. Um, the get unmap area, that's an interesting case. Uh, uh, I told in the introduction that this is something that needs to be fast and efficient. So we need to find a gap very uh, uh, easily. And today the implementation I made is able to find a gap. So it's using the usual way we are using today that in the arbitrary finding a gap. And when we are finding a gap, we have the previous VMA, the next VMA, if there is. And in that case, we can just simply check if, that VMA, if, if those VMA are locked and remove the locked area from the available gap. If it is not large enough, we can go forward. Just remember this one because it will be a fallback situation and we can use that. So there is no change in the existing arbitrary. There is just fetching two pointer in addition just to verify that the locked area. So it's still efficient and it's already done today because there is the VMA's gap that's taking in mind 
especially this is for the um, uh, VMA uh, for the stack uh, or VMA that can go in, uh, growing upper or down or downward. And there is the VMA's gap that's already taken in account in the process to ensure that the uh, 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 free area will be large enough. So no change to the uh, to these parts. And in the case, the, uh, the, um, the, the there is no enus uh, uh, area free area available. The option is to return the largest gap we was found, but we which was locked by some other threads. And in that case, the caller in the process will wait for this area to become freed to going forward and maybe refetched the new area if this area has been allocated by the thread in his back. So that's the same situation you are covering, Michel, except that you have to fetch uh, with the uh, VMA trees locked to find the, uh, the, the boundaries of the gap, available gap. Uh, uh, where is the microphone? Oh, sorry, oh, you want to ask a question? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I, I miss you. <laughs> If I find a candidate space, I add a dummy VMA in there so that I, I, it won't get the space I want it won't get uh, allocated uh, while I'm waiting to get my. Uh, so you introduce work. dummy VMA for that? Yes. Oh, okay. So um, you actually had two levels of locking. Uh, you have the lock for the RB tree to make sure that it stay consistent, and then each of the VMA you have a lock. So uh, there will be many situations that you have to take the two lock together and then release one lock and keep the other one. Have you mapped all the different cases to make sure that uh, there is no deadlock? I, I'm not side for that, but the idea is that, for example, when you are calling the get and map area. Clearly, the gap and map area needs to work the tree, so it needs to grab the log for the tree. Mm -hmm. But once you find the area, and that area has been locked, there is no more need for the uh, the ME tree locked. Uh, yes, but then when, when you need to make modification, you have to uh, white lock the RB tree sure. lock again, sure. and so there is a sure. difference. Sure, but there different ordering of how the log is taken and. So yeah. in, in certain case, it may lead to deadlock, so. You're right. That needs to be taken in, in, a, in a, So I, I just want to make sure that you remember you all the possible locking sequences to make sure that uh, you, you won't cause any deadlock. Yeah, you're right. That needs to be, uh, yeah, that needs to be uh, identified and clearly uh, documented there. Yeah. Absolutely. But that's, that's, uh, that's a pain. And, but that's depending on the way the uh, RB tree is protected. If it is there is some lockless operation that can be done there, that would be uh, faster. Uh, can you um, go back two slides to before the one one? Yeah. Stop me. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in here. Um, so it seems to me I might not understand this exactly right, but it seems to me that you are synthesizing a lock on the fly. Is that right? VMA, VML1 is a, a, a new lock that wasn't there before you decided to do this particular operation, right? Yeah. Okay, so in that case, you've got to, in, you've got to modify the lock pointer in three VMAs, VMA2, VMA3, VMA4, yeah. right? Absolutely. Which means in order to do that, you have to do something that is um, multi-thread safe. Yeah. Right, so it seems that you've moved the locking problem out, so now you need a lock to protect the fact that you're inserting a lock pointer, yes? Yes and no. Indeed, what, what I'm doing first, I will lock the VMA2. Because the, the first VMA I will fetch is VMA2. Because it's close to the boundaries, it's VMA2. Okay? So I got the, VM, the RB3 lock to do that. Or if there is some lockless operation to fetch the VMA, that would be fine, but not today. So. Fetching the VMA2, allocating the VMA lock, and pointing the VMA lock to the VMA2, that's something that needs to be one atomic operation. Which means it needs to be protected by a lock, because you yeah. can't do all those things atomically. Yeah. And then, fetching so, the VMA3. So which lock protects can, that operation? Sorry? Which lock protects that 
operation. The arbitrary operation. Oh, there is the arbitrary, but I introduce one log just to, for um, creating the linked from the VMA to the VMA lock. Okay, okay. I use that, but that's it, only it, the writer that's It does rubbing. feel a little like we've just kind of shoved the locking problem a little farther down yeah, the road. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, you're just, right, I'm you're right. <laughs> yeah, but yes, that, that's, that's needed, but I think that also can be done under some RCU protection because it's just a compare and, and, compare and, 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 and load operation, compare and write operation. That's not something that needs to be a, a, a real lock indeed. Because we can fetch the VMA and just, if, if there is the pointer to the VMA lock operation is null, that means there is no writer. So just a compare and store operation is, is atomic. That's uh, enough for doing that. No? <laughs> but that's the implementation data is any right. That needs to be, uh, um, the, the, the global ID is, for me is to go straight, put some lock to protect that. But later, I'm pretty sure I can remove that lock and do something that's more like locklessly to do that. But uh, the, the full inf the full solution to, to not having that lock is probably uh, actually the data structure that holds all the VMAs in and of itself. Uh, if, if you have each node, uh, if you're considering VMA 1, two, uh, 2, 3, and 4 as independent and you have to lock each one to add uh, the portions, then yes, you would need multiple locks. But if there's something above that, uh, that to get to these VMAs you would need uh, and, you, and you lock that, then that lock already exists and you, you remove yeah. the problem. Yes, I agree, but I didn't see that. Yeah, that's, uh, it's because this is a layout of the VMA yeah, versus yeah, the no, tree you're right, layout. You're right. That does not all the details. No, no, some secrets. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, where I was? Uh, yeah. Hello. <coughs> So, no, no, it's not working. So, just a couple of words about the kind of hazards uh, we have to face. I mean, it's the same for for Michel. Uh, there is a lot of places in the kernel that have implicit dependency on the MAPSM. You know, they don't. And if they don't necessarily even have a comment about it, you know, sometimes it's uh, somebody that say, oh, uh, actually uh, this uh, race case won't happen because I'm holding the MAP7 in read mode or the MAP7 is, is held in write mode. And, and so it depends on the fact that the MAP semaphore is actually held in some way or the others. And um, um, yeah, so the sad state of affair is really that uh, uh, we have to uh, audit every device driver in every file system also. File system have been cleaned up mostly, so I think at this point in time, really, it should be safe. Uh, but you know, it's better to take another uh, deep look into it to make sure that you know <laughs> uh, there is no uh, no no um, implicit dependency still uh, uh, creeping inside them. Uh, there might also be a buggy user space application that uh, out of sheer luck uh, works because of the map semaphore. You know, some uh, application doing uh, M on map or M map and uh, having multiple threads running at the same time, and it's just working because uh, thanks to the uh, exclusion of uh, memory uh, semaphore, uh, there is no issue between two threads. Uh, you know, this kind of application is obviously buggy from, you know, they, they, they work because the way the Linux kernel works today, so it's an artifact for them to be working. So I don't know if we should be worrying about them and like, you know, trying to make sure we don't break them, or if we just should, you know, go ahead and and have them seek fault or seek bus, and then you know they can see why they're actually doing something buggy. Um, and then there is a bunch also of uh, kernel uh, specific um, architecture code or puke pages. So some architecture are doing stuff, for instance, uh, when you have a, a data cache and uh, instruction cache are different beyond some CPU architecture or a poor PC that is doing things uh, with uh, the segment size and all that kind of stuff we're talking uh, earlier today. So, you know, there is many places we need to look into deeply to make sure that we are not going to break them and that we can move. Like 
the best thing we want to do really is to move them away from depending on the MAPSEM and move them to their own locking. Because you know, when it's a device driver, the device driver should be relying on its own data structure and its own locking instead of uh, relying implicitly on uh, MAP semaphore. Um, and same thing for architecture code. Basically. We want to move them away uh, as much as possible um, from the MAP semaphore. And same for file system. Um, so the plan really, um, you know, the battle plan, is kind of um, first keep the MAP semaphore as is. Uh, you know, as the patch is, is, is constructed, basically. Um, then introduce the new locking mechanism inside the core MM code, basically. So, you know, you do all the modification for the old uh, the core kernel memory management. Um, and at this time, you don't have any kind of concurrency because you're still holding the MAP semaphore exactly as it is today. So, you know, everything works as it is today. It's just data structure inside the core MMs that are, that are being modified and updated. Um, once we got the core MM code done, we can then uh, use it, uh, we can start testing things by simply you know, um, saying, well, for that process, I want actually to uh, no longer use VMAPS and, and being able to test the concurrency and see if my code, core MM code works. And you know, we can isolate the process that don't, don't use uh, or don't evenly rely on file system or specific device driver, so you don't have you know, the hazard of, of device driver and file system being uh, uh, maybe being buggy and, 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 and introducing bug. Um, so that will be the first part, and, and obviously then the next part is uh, to convert uh, every architecture code, every file system, every device driver, and make sure that all the core uh, code inside the kernel is well aware about the change that is happening, and that is there is no, long, no longer any kind of implicit dependency on the map semaphore, and everything is explicit everywhere. Um, and finally, you know, uh, remove the map semaphore, and that will be the really um, last step. Um, so that's that's what we have really. Um, I don't know if people have more questions. Another question, more comment, like, uh, so you have that plan, I have a plan, we have two plans, like we haven't really converted them. I just want to be explicit about that because maybe it's not clear to everyone, and yeah. honestly, I don't have an answer to it yet, but uh, I just want to put that on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I think we are two uh, years only one. You know, <laughs> I, I think the so so the issue. Here, I, I think we never convinced that our approach is better than Michel or Michel approach is better than us. Um, and I think the good thing here is that you know you you can have a patch set, we can have a patch set, and then people can start looking at the patch set and see what what they like more. Um, so you know they can look at from the high level point of view, you know because the approach from high level point of view is different between what we do and what you do. So people can judge on the uh, high level point of view, and then we can also judge on on what the, up, the implementation will end up to look like. Um, and I believe you know it's something that we'll need to have enough consensus inside the kernel community to be able to move forward because this is a really daunting task, uh, and it's also really uh, you know scary to change something because it's it's like the MAP semaphore screwing that up basically means you're gonna screw yeah. the whole kernel, everybody like nothing will work again. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's some common part. That's all that's been explained uh, regarding the uh, use of the MAP semaphore on some driver and whatever. That's we need to be covered by the boss. Uh, that's yeah, if, uh, yeah, yeah. There is a bunch of work we can do together, like you know, driver file system auditing, um, all the and con converting all the places that do take VMM same to a common helper function, all that kind of you know, various things we can share definitely, and we can even tr probably start to push upstream because they are clean up mostly, and adding commands and and you know, saying all oh, these drivers implicitly depend depending on VMM same and so on and so forth. So there is things we can work on on that are like that we agree definitely need to happen um, and share the code for that. One thing I uh, would like to mention regarding the page fault path and the, because we were talking about the log that's needed to be taken in some situation for that. One of the little advantage for this solution is that during the page fault path, there is no need to grab a lock. Because if we have some way to fetch the VMA locklessly thanks to the maple tree, for instance, for instance then we just need to increment a counter to grab the read log for the VMA, yeah. and that's enough. And at that time, the VMA is locked. So there is no uh, contention during the page fault. Um, yes, that's still, a lock on, that's still a lock within that VMA structure, but that's... Uh, no, no lock inside the VMA structure. For the reader, they just are counter to increment. 
to increment in an atomic way. Yeah. I call that a lock. <laughs> but sure. Yeah, yeah, that's an atomic. So that's that's there is some some uh, uh, synchronization, cache synchronization to be done. I agree. Yes. But in the case, the same VMA is used by separate threads. But that's that's not 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 necessarily the case. So uh, what kind of lock are you implement? Are you put inside the VM, VMA? Is what? it uh, what kind of lock? Nothing. This. For the VMA, inside the VMA itself, yeah. there is no lock. It's just a reference, uh, um, an atomic values for the readers and a pointer to the VMA lock. Okay, you said that you can just get a read lock by incrementing counter. Because when we, are, when we are taking the read lock, we just need to increment the number of readers for that VMA. Yes, but then do you need to hold the, the read lock for the whole tree? That's a different story. That will depend how the VMA trees is implemented. The VMA lock I am proposing here is not dependent on the way the VMA tree is implemented. It can be as a today from the, the form of the arbitrary and double link VMA list protected by a lock. Or this can be, I hope in the future, something that Liam is working on, that is the maple tree. And that maple tree allows Lockless access to your CU protection. I, I see. Okay. Any other question? So when you increment the counter to say, hey, I'm a reader, uh, do you not then also need to check to see if a writer came in? Right. So, that, so that's going to need a... Well, a heavier fence, I suppose. Well, maybe it yeah. doesn't, but it's going but to be some sort you can, of you can, you can just increment the, read, the, read, the reader, mm -hmm. okay? So now you are... But then you need to check You are a the... potential reader. Check the pointer. There is a pointer. Decrement the reader and wait on the way queue. Okay. But you've still got some extra fences in there. Yeah, but that's, that's not a contention operation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely better than MMAPSM. Yeah, it's I, just something to I consider. Hope so. <laughs> I think we're done. Yeah, yeah, we ran a little bit over, but there was yeah. nothing in the following <laughs> slide. Um, just as a reminder, uh, if you, uh, just as a reminder, if you've made presentations today, um, please upload it to the Linux Plumber site. Uh, if you're not able to, send it to me, and I'll make sure it gets uploaded. Okay. Um, so we can yeah, make sure great. that these slide sets are available uh, to everyone. So, thank you. <laughs>